Howdy and welcome to the 10-week Bible study. This is week 7, day 2 of our study of Ezra. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Ezra 7, 11 through 17. Hey, real quick, if you'd like more info on the 10-week Bible study, head over to 10weekbible.com today. We've got lots of helpful resources, links to studies you can lead or read, and a place to sign up for our email list where we will send out weekly updates about the current study as well as news about upcoming studies. All right, thanks. With that, let's jump back into it. Welcome back to the 10-Week Bible Study. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God? Speak to us and fill us with the knowledge of you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. I'll be reading today from the NIV. This is Ezra 7, starting in verse 11. This is a copy of the letter King Artaxerxes had given to Ezra the priest, a teacher of the law, a man learned in matters concerning the commands and decrees of the Lord of Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, teacher of the law of the God of heaven. Greetings. I, I want to pause right there. Isn't it interesting that the way this is structured here, the way that we're talking about this, it really seems like Artaxerxes honors or serves the Lord. It seems like there is, is, is something inside art of Xerxes where at least he fears the God of the Jews. Maybe he's not monotheistic at this point. Maybe he is still serving the Babylonian gods and the, the Persian gods or whatever else, but it really does seem that he is at least, at least venerating the God of Israel. This is one of those things that it's it's difficult to tell at, at different times. And you know, when we read the story of the Babylonian captivity, Nebuchadnezzar obviously has got a thing for false gods and false idols, including, you know, giant statues in the middle of a plain where he's going to have everyone bow down to. But it really seems like by the end of his lifetime, he is honoring and serving only the God of the Israelites. At least that's the way it seems. We don't know the entire story. We don't have the full history of, of the end of Nebuchadnezzar's life, not even in, in secular uh, archaeology and history. But at least from what the scripture tells us, it seems like his heart had completely repented and turned toward the one true God. Had this happened with Artaxerxes at this point, or was it just a, a veneration of the God of Israel? We can't be sure, but it seems like at the very least, there is a fear of the one true God in Artaxerxes from what he's going to do here. Continuing on, uh, verse 13. Now, I decree that any of the Israelites in my kingdom, including priests and Levites who volunteer to go to Jerusalem with you, they may go. You are sent by the king and his seven advisors to inquire about Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand. Moreover, you are to take with you the silver and gold that the king and his advisors have freely given to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem. Pause right there. You see what he just said? Artaxerxes is writing this letter and saying, he and his seven advisors, these eight men, they have given out of their own pocket. Now, granted, their pockets, their money comes from the government, comes from the taxes, but they have given their own personal money for this endeavor. They've given Ezra money out of their own wallets to go and rebuild the temple and to begin teaching people the law of the Lord. Even though they're not Jews, they see the, the teaching of the Jewish people, the law of the Lord, as so important that they were willing to give free will offerings to see it done, to see the temple built and completed, and to see the law taught to the people of God. They gave money out of their own coffers. They're going to, to or out of their own wallets, they're going to give money out of the tax coffers, out of the public coffers as well. But they wanted to go above and beyond that. Artaxerxes could have just said, listen, here's a pot of money like from our budget. You can have it. Take that. They went a step further and they gave personal money. This cannot be overstated. When we look at the, the whole of Ezra and Nehemiah, at various times, the kings of, of Persia were, were very excited to fund what was going on for one reason or another. But here we see that Artaxerxes is giving money 
out of his own pocket and he's encouraged his seven advisors to do the same and they have. That is phenomenal to think about that. This is starting to look like when the Jews left Egypt or when the Israelites left Egypt, he said, ask them for money and they will be favorably disposed towards you and they'll give you stuff. And that's exactly what happened here. God is sending the the Jews out of Babylon, back out of, of the, the Persian kingdom from Babylon, where they've been living for a generation. And, and he's, he's sending them back with money, with, with riches, with wealth, actually. He, he's already done it. We're going to find out that they're all broke now. We've already talked about that. They're really broke now. They're really in, in dire straits, and the Lord is going to resupply them. Let's continue on. Verse 15. Moreover, you to take with you, or excuse me, verse 16, together with all the silver and gold you may obtain from the province of Babylon, as well as the freewill offerings of the people and priests for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. With this money, be sure to buy bulls, rams, and male lambs together with their grain offerings and drink offerings and sacrifice them on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem. So Artaxerxes is saying, listen, go and take offerings amongst your own people and see if they're willing to give free will offerings for you to take back to rebuild this temple and to, to, to sacrifice all these bulls. I want you to take all that money, any other money that you can get from the province of Babylon, from the public coffers, from private donations. I want you to take all that money. I want you to buy the bulls and the rams. And and I'm I'm hearing this conversation go on in the back of Artaxerxes' head as, as he and Ezra have had conversations back and forth about this. Again, we don't get to hear any of that. We're not told about any of that, but this letter didn't just come out of nowhere. And so I can hear, you know, I can imagine this is, again, not not in the Bible, but I'm just imagining the conversations going on before this happens where Ezra is talking to Artaxerxes and it's like, I've got to, like we sacrifice bulls and rams, but we don't do it before an idol. We do it before, you know, the sky, just the openness, because, you know, there is to be no image made of God and, and we need to go teach the Israelites and make the sacrifices. And he's, he's telling Artaxerxes all of these things and Artaxerxes is intrigued by everything that Ezra is telling him. And he's saying, you know what? When he writes this letter, go and do it. Make sure that you do it. And I imagine that Artaxerxes is, is wise enough to understand that after the journey and, and after all of the trouble that I know that your people have gone through in these last couple of generations up until now that we've already looked at in the book of Ezra, I know that your people have gone through all of this trouble and there's been a lot of bureaucratic like nightmares facing you along the way. He's like, I want you to make sure that you do this. Artaxerxes is, is telling him personally and sending him with this letter. Make sure you do this. Don't fail to do this. When you get there, don't get discouraged. Don't let people stop you. Here's the letter to prove that I'm telling you to make sure that this happens. It's an um, amazing document here that we have. Showing us even back then, you know, the bureaucratic nightmares that people face. It's, it's nothing new today. But he's telling them, I don't care who stands in your way. Make sure that this gets done. Don't let anything stand in your way. Go back and teach the people the law. Perform your sacrifices and rebuild the temple with the money that we're sending you. For the 10-week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10 week Bible study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show. And my heart is for people to fall in love with God's word. Thank you. Thank you.